Hi, I'm Bruce Blitz and welcome to Cartooning with Blitz. Now, funny incidents happen to everybody every day. Now what would happen if you wrote all these little incidents down, created characters, added dialogue? You'd have the makings for a great comic strip. And that's what we'll be doing today, comic strips. And for our feature of the day, artist and writer Duck Edwing from Mad Magazine will be joining us. You don't want to miss this. I'm pretty excited about it. And for our doodle trick portion, number tunes. Finished cartoons from numbers. So let's get started. And I want to show you a comic strip that I've created with a character that I created called Hero Guy. And in the first panel, Hero Guy is flying around. And some people are looking up. And the man says, I've never seen anything like this before. And the woman says, cool. Next panel, he's still flying around. And the man says, such form. And the woman says, how does he do it? And in the next panel, the man says, well, let's ask him. And in the last panel, he says, what do you use on your hair? Kind of a surprise ending, because here a guy thought that they were admiring the way he flies. All right, now I'll show you the size that it ends up in the newspaper. Much smaller, as you can see. Now, the size that you decide to work is purely an individual choice. I've seen cartoonists work all different kinds of sizes. It doesn't matter, but what does matter is it must end up the right proportion. That's the important thing. Now, the next thing is a rough. And a rough is just that. It's a rough idea of the idea that I had. And I'll show that to you right now. And what I've done in the rough is I've broken it down to basic panels and decided what dialogue I would use. And you want to keep the dialogue as short as you possibly can. And it's just a frame of reference. And I'll tape that down. And I can refer to it when I'm doing the finished comic strip. And we'll do that next. Now, I'll show you the next stage. And I've got it all penciled in here. And what I've done is I've got some lines right over here for the dialogue. Because you don't want to have the dialogue floating around. You want to keep it centered if you can. And you want to keep it not going up on a hill or down. So left the left, I've left the last panel open. And we'll do that one together. And I'll tape that down. And I'll do the dialogue with you and the characters. I'm using a pencil, an HB pencil. Or you can use a number two pencil. That works fine. And it says here, what do you use on? And if you don't like the way it comes out, you can always erase it, because that's the point of the pencil stage, your hair. And there it is. Now let's create Hero Guy. Now, when you create your own character, when you design your character, you want to give them an outstanding physical trait. In this case, I've given them funny hair, some bumps. And because of that, I was able to build this gag on it, maybe other gags too in the future. If you think of some of your favorite cartoon characters, they all have an outstanding trait. A beetle Bailey, you never see his eyes. And Hagar. The horrible. He wears the uh, Viking helmet. He's got this big beard. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to ink this in. But first, it's time for the gag sketch of the day. And this one is a pun. And take a look at that. We've got, who said that? I heard that. Family ties. That's right. We've got the mother and father and the two children. Family ties. All right, let's continue. <laughs> I'm going to be using a felt tip marker here with a fairly flexible point. And because it's a fairly flexible point, I can get a thick and thin line with a little bit of variation of hand pressure. And I'll show you that in a moment. Now let's go back and do the characters. Now getting back to Hagar, Hagar is really just a family strip set in days of old, isn't it? And there's a lot of great gags that can be built around family situation. And the fact that it's set in days of old, well, he can have some fun with the time period. But you know, comic strips don't have to be funny. They can be serious, like the daily drama strip or an action strip. Now, if you do have a comedy strip, there's different variations within that. Like, for instance, you can have a, an unrelated gag a day, just like something that doesn't necessarily go with the day before, not a regular cast of characters. Or you can have a regular cast of characters and build gags on their personality traits, like his hair, or a personality trait like someone you know doesn't want to spend a lot of money. You can build gags around that. 
where like Dagwood Bumstead, he likes those big sandwiches. And he builds many, many gags around that. Now we'll draw the woman back here, and I'm going to ease up on the pen a little bit because I want her to be a little bit lighter because she's seen in the distance here. So I'm kind of lifting that pen and squeezing just a little bit so I don't put too much pressure on that. Okay, now for the balloon. This is called the balloon, and the balloon means where the dialogue is placed. And this here is called the pointer, and that lets you know who was doing the speaking. All right, now I'm going to move on to Hero Guy. Let's finish our hair up a little bit and her shoulder. All right, now right here I'm going to apply a little pressure, ease up, apply a little pressure, ease up, and do that all the way to the end. You know what? I'm even going to give him just the three bumps and go over like that. Again, that's the point of the pencil stage. Because you want to draw your characters consistently. Whatever you decide to draw them like, what they look like, you want to do it over and over again. You don't want to change it. And a good piece of advice is you want to design your character to be easy to draw. Because let's say you were fortunate enough to have your comic strip published in the newspaper. Now that would be fun, wouldn't it? Can you imagine the thrill of opening up a newspaper and seeing your work published in there or a magazine? That's got to be the greatest thrill in the world. And if you are fortunate enough to have your strip published, you would want to have a character that was designed easy enough to draw a lot. Because let's face it, if you get your comic strip published, you'll have to have many, many gags. 365 to be exact. Okay, and right here, put the G from the HG, because hero guy. Now, I'm going to put the borders in. Now, what I'm going to do is freehand this. Now, you can use a ruler and get that real straight look, or a lot of cartoonists that I've seen, they do it freehand like this. It all depends on what? That's right, your own style, your own personal choice. Okay, the next thing you want to do is add the large black areas. Once you've got it all done like that, and I'm going to go back and do his cape. Right up to that line. And now let's do the, guy, the uh, lettering. Now, a lot of comic strip artists use a dip pen. That's how they did it in the days before markers. A lot of cartoonists still do that. And the good news with a dip pen is that while it's more permanent, it gives you a very, very professional look to it, and it'll, it'll last forever. It won't fade. Now, some markers, they fade. Also, the downside to a marker is the points, they don't stay consistent. You know, they, they kind of get a little softer as you work with them, and you can't get that real thin line anymore. But the good news is with a marker is you can keep going and it takes less skill to actually start working with one. Okay, now that all that is done, take your eraser and I'm using a kneaded rubber eraser and that's kneaded, K-N-E-A-D, because you can knead it like a piece of dough or clay and it cleans itself a little bit and you can shape it to get into a hard to reach place, which is good because you don't want to erase too much sometimes. Uh, and it doesn't leave a lot of messy crumbs, which is handy because what you don't want to keep doing is smearing your picture like that. So let's erase that last panel, and the ink lines will stay, and the pencil lines will go. You want to be careful because you don't want to turn your page into an accordion, so use your fingers and hold that down real good. All right, now I'll show you the finished strip again. Here's what it looks like, and it looks pretty good. Now, how about you? Funny incidents happen to you all the time, right? So you write them down, and as I said, you add some dialogue, some characters, and there's your finished comic strip.